Hello. I'm going to have a little discussion here about the audio system in the Tiki project. The basics of the audio system were with two components. Component number one is this teeny tiny chip here called a WTV020. It is a sound recorder chip. Now, the really cool thing about the chip is that it can play up to 511 different sound files by accessing it and are all on this little one gigabyte SD card. This is a micro SD card. And that is all the bigger it is. So it's a pretty wonderful chip. You can see it doesn't have a whole lot of connections to it. It has power. It has a ground connection. This is the power. This is the ground. It has a busy signal that's on one of the pins. I've connected to it with an LED and a resistor. And I have a couple of wires hanging here just to uh, provide I.O. signals. This is the reset line and this is the play the next sound file line. Uh, the idea was to set it up to test it and get the files onto the memory card correctly and have it working so we understood how to get all that programming done. The other part is the audio amplifier. If you learn and listen to the SD card, the SD card and the player itself just puts out very, very small power. Not enough to really drive a speaker. It can drive a very small speaker and it's very soft. So this was an excellent little buy here with this power amplifier. It has a, it actually is a stereo, it has two inputs to it. And that whole assembly I bought for $5.99 off of eBay. So it's very, very inexpensive. And I bought some special computer speakers. These are not great stereo speakers. These are more computer speakers. They're shielded. Uh, they're compact. That's a four-inch speaker, and it has a limited range as far as its dynamic range. It's not uh, like a high-fidelity speaker. It is from about uh, 200 hertz to about uh, 5 kilohertz, maybe 8 kilohertz. So it's more of a mid-range type of speaker, but it's lightweight and it's very inexpensive. So that was really a cool part of it, too. And cost is always an issue with products. So we have the chip. It's the basic sound. And that, that chip is about $5.50, $6. Uh, your memory card, uh, same thing, I can order it for about $3. When I first hooked it up for the very first prototype, I used a cell phone power supply for 5 volts. And I think uh, anytime you have cell phones and you want to get rid of the old power supplies, you keep them because they're very valuable. The other, th the other power supply for the amplifier, that requires 12 volts. So I have another battery device. This is a wall wart from a uh, old lantern. But it puts out 14 volts DC which was within the rating of that amplifier. So I was able to power it up and do a fine job with that. Now as I went along and got the first pass done, I made a chassis out of plastic, uh, drilled some holes so I could put fusing here for the 110 volts, and I got a 12 volt 3 amp power supply and a 5 volt 4 amp power supply. These are switching power supplies. They're fairly inexpensive. Uh, the idea is there's a lot of other things and loads in this Tiki project that are going to need power. So I have power supplies for that. Uh, later on I'll be adding more fusing and, and a switch in the project to go ahead and power more things from it. Okay, so at this point uh, we've got it all set up. This board here is an interesting board. It is 
it costs less than two dollars it is a buck power supply this circuit board here runs from 3.3 volts now what we can do is use a uh, supply a 5 volt supply and put a couple diodes in it to get diode drops for it I prefer this way getting this buck supply and this is adjusted so 5 volts in is 3.3 volts out which is perfect for it it is oversized it does a whole lot but that's very good it buffers it and keeps everybody happy it's very well regulated okay uh, after that brief explanation we'll, we'll put up a couple other little small points this block right here is a ferrite core uh, when I was running the amplifier and the audio system from the wall wart which is a, a charger from a, uh, a lantern I had no problems at all when I hooked it up to this uh, 12 volt 3 amp switching power supply which has a lot of beef to it uh, it turns out I was getting a lot of noise and it was I had troubleshot it and it was coming through the amplifier and it seemed to be load dependent so it turns out that the power supply had enough noise and ripple because of the switching to drive the amplifier a little crazy so I had to externally add a choke so the power supply for the 12 volts comes through the choke and I've wrapped it around a few times and I've uh, hooked it up to the the power then hooks up to the amplifier and I did some experimentation removing lines of choke and it turned out this is the best uh, combination to give us great noise reduction without having uh, the uh, excessive windings around it again this is a prototype so we learn things each and every step of the way so right now the first thing I'm going to do is power it up and I have a, a remote switch here to be able to turn everything off and on so as we start to boot things up everything starts to jump to life you see the power supply is light each card has its LED to light then the at WTV 020 sound player it has a, uh, a light that I added that says that it's ready to go uh, just to mention other things I do have spacing in here uh, the the plan is that that's where the Arduino controller is going to be I have a prototype card for the uh, sound processor chip. Now, moving on in the future, once I have the sound system working and set up the way that I, that I like to, the next step is going to be to mount an UNO here for the controller for CPU, making sure that I have the connections sticking out to where we can get to them. This power jack is also going to be wound through with this choke and wound to the power connected to the 12 volt power supply. I have the prototype card here for a shield that will be mounted on top and all the circuitry from the sound card will be installed here and so I will get rid of this board and now I have another board here for wiring power distribution for LEDs and other effects like that okay and now whenever these boards get moved over to here I will also use the Arduino 3.3 volt power supply to power this chip so this power supply will not be needed anymore this very small infrared motion detector as you can see it's extremely tiny is going to be the trigger for the Tiki whenever someone walks past it's going to send an output signal that says it senses movement and as long as the busy signal which is this is the LED right now it's lit meaning it's not busy so if it's not busy and this detects motion it's going to trigger now what I'm going to do is add some hardware so that the circuit simplified going to the Arduino rather than wiring the busy signal the control signal and this motion detector I'm going to put some just simple TTL logic for interlocking so that it doesn't send a signal until it's ready and also it detects motion. So it be a couple AND gates and inverters to get the polarities of the bits right for the controller. 
and then there will be a signal here to tell it to run. So we can just do an example of a signal to tell it to run. Which is really pretty cool because we can send tiki sounds and have it sound like it's cool. And I have a reset button there to shut it off so that I can talk. Uh, so that is the basic control of the, the Tiki sound system and as we move along we'll progress through the additional changes and upgrades.